People always talk about how time flies. It's become sort of a colloquialism now. You don't really understand it until you reach your late 30s and early 40s. And I'm sure time will move even faster as I get older. We all pine for a time in life when things were simpler. Even when they weren't necessarily simpler, hindsight makes them look a lot simpler. The reality of it was that it wasn't. I decided a handful of years ago that I just want to write songs that you can understand as soon as you put the record on. There's no need to veil what's happening in the song the way I used to. I think that the wonderful thing about music and about songs is that you can listen to a three-minute song whenever you feel you need it. My goal as a songwriter now is to simply write some memorable turns of phrase. I read on the road in college. I was 18 or 19, and I had a particular quarter where I was taking biology, calculus, and physics. Those were my three classes. It wasn't a well-rounded schedule at all. It was hard, hard work all the time hours and hours and hours of homework. To set the record straight for the God knows millionth time, we certainly didn't sign to Atlantic just for the money. Living this life in the same sort of way that Kerouac lived, you get to hang out at shows and drink and you're able to not really face reality and adulthood the way most of my friends are. It's like, how do you continue to make records that are representative of who you are that your fans will recognize as your band, while still trying to push things forward and present new sounds for people? You can't please everybody all the time. But I think for the most part we tend to maintain a healthy level of self-reference to kind of make sure we continue to push things forward. We never sit down before we start making a record and talk about this new sonic palette that we are going to try to explore. We always let the record kind of reveal itself to us over time. Everybody has a language or code that they use with their wife or their girlfriend or boyfriend or what have you. It's a language aside from the language they have with strangers. I've always been maybe an abuser of alliteration, but I've always loved it and I like how those words sound together. For Narrow Stairs, the majority of the songs I brought in were guitar songs, songs we could sit in a room and just play. I can honestly say I had more fun and felt more inspired on this record than anything that we had done in a long time. I like writing on piano and a computer, and a lot of plans came out of samples and vocal lines. I don't want to be overdramatic about it, but I'm starting to see a lot of my bad habits get the best of me. I love bummer songs. It's trippy to think we have an album that's 10 years old. It's even trippier to think we have a couple of albums older than that. The second Postal Service album is threatening to become the Chinese democracy of indie rock. It will come out eventually, or maybe it won't. I just rediscovered my guitar. I'm not like a 90 miles per hour fastball kind of guy, but I can hit 70 on radar gun. I hit 71 time on a radar guy at one of those pitch and throw kind of things. I have a pretty good arm for somebody who's not a baseball player. I've always had a soft spot for Phil Collins. He's a great vocalist. 
I've covered Avril Lavigne. I like good pop songs, and I don't think there should be any kind of preconceptions about where good pop songs come from. I feel that we are currently living in a world that is similar to late 50s, early 60s kind of world. I was literally just going and applying for jobs, and I couldn't get a job, and I was getting more and more broke, and you find yourself groveling for jobs you don't even want. When we moved to Seattle, everybody kind of disappeared into different corners of the city, and it was a very difficult time for the band. The songwriting of Hall Oates is deceptively complex. There are a number of key changes that pass you by as you're listening to the song because they're so seamless and clever. Hall Oates is one of the few musical groups as satisfying now as it was back then. There's something incredibly musically satisfying about their songs. Nothing has diminished my love for them. As a songwriter, I'm not necessarily writing about myself or my life. What we aspired to in 1998, we have wildly surpassed. And I know we all feel incredibly grateful and lucky this band has been able to have the life that it's had. I think the narratives on trans, plans, and narrow stairs moved away from the way I wrote on the first couple of records, which was a lot more impressionistic. I was writing those songs in my early 20s, so I thought I was being more clear than I actually was. When I listen to and play the songs from narrow stairs now, that record feels like a record where we had established a style that arguably was more our own than it was in the beginning. Going into that record, I felt a lot more confident in my songwriting. It was a fairly prolific time for me. We tend to think of our idols as kind of superheroes, maybe less so today. Given that people have a tendency to overshare on social media, but when I was growing up, all you knew about these people was what they allowed you to see, which was them doing superhuman things up on stage in an arena with all these people going crazy. I love San Francisco more than any other city outside of Seattle, but I've seen it go from a vibrant, creative community to a playground for tech brothers. When you connect as many memories to your geography as I have, and then you see that geography change around you, you're forced to reckon with the passage of time. I know that the Seattle my parents knew is not the Seattle I know and that these things exist in a state of constant flux and change. The hope is that at least some of that change can be for the better. When I'm old, I'd like to wake up in the morning and not really do anything. Just be happy to exist. I'd like to look at my accomplishments and sit back and revel in my own achievement. At some point, I thought that, as I got older, I'd come to terms with a lot of things. I'd solve some big problems, and eventually I'd become content. It's almost more depressing to think that the older you get, the more your problems multiply. I remember hoping there'd be 10 people at a show in 1998 when there was an incredible write-up in the local weekly. I don't want to go back to that period of being obscure and having nobody know who I am, let alone have to struggle to get people to come to the show. Death Cab always gets right of first refusal on everything I write, but I tend to know early on 
There's a song that has yet to be released. It might come to light at some point in the near future that when I was writing it, I was really proud of it lyrically. I always try to write the best song I can in the moment, and those songs are often going to end up on Death Cab for Cutie Records. I don't set out to write a solo song or write a band song. I just write, and where that song ends up is kind of TBD. When I look back at 2003, it was the best year I've ever had creatively. Having transatlantism and give up come out in the course of six months. I'll never have another year like that. I think a very clear cut example of dare I say plagiarism is the Sam Smith Tom Petty situation where you have a song that is flagrantly. It is the hook from one song being used for another song. To me, that was a very obvious example of plagiarism. If somebody had done that to me, I would probably take a similar course of action. I don't feel that all the great songs have been written. I do feel that where we are now, certainly with rock roll music, is that so much of it is variations on themes. But I think that it's one's particular creativity and individuality that comes out within that variation on a particular theme that makes a song great. I would much rather hear a song that's written from a fresh perspective, using ideas that have existed in rock roll for 50 years, than something that is incredibly abrasive to my ears but is new. I think there's something that feels so good about a 1-4-5 chord progression. It's a very standard chord progression, and it just feels good to the ears. I think a lot of people who become music fans have that moment where they break from their parents' music, they break from the radio and MTV, at least in my generation, they did. And MTV isn't really a thing anymore. And you discover something that defines you, that is outside of the mainstream. I've written a lot of songs in the last couple years, but writing a lot of songs doesn't always mean writing good songs. If you're going through a difficult time, and there's a piece of music that speaks to you, be it musically or lyrically, or both, you are almost always able to access that music. You're always able to sit down with it. I still love The Cure more than almost any other band, but they were really, truly like the first band that I really loved and felt was mine, you know at a pivotal time in my life when I was 13, 14 years old.